From an asthmatic villain to a giant dog that flies a spaceship. This is the story of the fourth film in the series, which is actually the first. Yeah, just go with it. So this all takes place in a galaxy far, far away. Well, that's putting it lightly. I mean, do you know how far away space actually is? It's far. Now, of course, there's a galactic war between the good guys and bad ones here, though it's initially difficult to figure out who is who since the good peeps are called rebels and the bad ones are known as the Empire. The Empire's big cheese is this villain with a terrible breathing problem called Darth Vader. Deep breath, deep breath, <gasps> deep breath. It's a much more menacing name than if he was just called Phil or Jip. Despite his asthma, he has some killer one-liners in the movie, it must be said. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Anyway, the Empire has this space station called the Death Star, which doesn't look like a star at all, but more like an oversized bouncing ball. It's apparently capable of great destruction, but the Rebels have stolen the plans for it, like in some top-secret James Bond espionage mission. It's not impossible. The Empire manages to catch the leader of the Rebels, Princess Leia, who doesn't really wear a crown but is still a princess according to her name. Before her capture, though, she entrusts a bunch of robots with the Death Star plans and a message for some old dude in a robe, then sends them off to some planet that no one can pronounce. Through some miracle or act of screenwriting premonition, these dumb-looking robots arrive on Luke Skywalker's doorstep. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. Luke does seem to be important in this story, so let's keep a closer eye on him. Eventually, the old man in a robe appears and reveals to Luke that he's the one Leia is looking for, and he went by a different name in the past. Well, that's helpful. The world is burning and you're busy creating alter egos for giggles, Obi-Wan. The good news is that he seems to know what must be done and eventually enlists Luke's help, also handing him a dangerous light sword that once belonged to Luke's father, Anakin. Naturally, he fails to mention how he maimed sliced and diced Anakin because that's a story for another sequel or prequel. I loved you. Oh, and he also reveals how there's something called the Force that's invisible, but you can feel it. Kind of like when someone breathes on the back of your neck and tells you they love the way you smell when you sleep. Together, Obi-Wan, Luke, and the stupid robots decide to take the Death Star plans to Leia's home planet, another place that no one can spell or pronounce because Leia's father and the rebels will know what to do with it. To get there, Luke and Obi-Wan find a space pirate, Han Solo, and his giant dog, Chewbacca, who happens to have a spaceship called the Millennium Falcon. And no, it doesn't look anything like a falcon. What is it with this franchise? and naming things poorly. Now, for someone with the surname Solo, he's anything but, as he's in deep trouble with a giant gangster blob whose influence reaches across the galaxy. So the pirate and dog agree to take Luke and Obi-Wan to the planet, for a fee, of course. And it's gonna cost you something extra. What's particularly scary is how Han lets his dog be the co-pilot of the spaceship. I mean, can dogs get licenses for this kind of thing? But plot twist time, one of Darth Vader's pals blew up Leia's planet because he interrogated her to find out the rebels were there. How sneaky and actually pretty brilliant of him. At the same time, the Millennium Falcon got caught by the Death Star's beam -a jig thingy, but the heroes managed to hide and evade capture. Wouldn't matter anyway, since the Death Star's army is a bunch of amateur soldiers that can aim a blaster to save their lives, and they constantly walk into door frames too. <laughs> Like in any good story, the heroes split up because that always goes well. Obi-Wan slips off to disable the beam -a jig thingy while Luke convinces the pirate and dog to rescue Leia, which they do after beating up some more useless soldiers. As expected though, Obi-Wan bumps into Vader. I have a very bad feeling about this. It's the big fight that everyone has been waiting for as the two light up their swords and duel, finding a moment here and there to reveal some mandatory plot exposition and trash talking. Your power is a weak old man. Like every older wise hero in a sci-fi story, Obi-Wan sacrifices himself for the greater good, vanishing into thin air and leaving only his robe behind. Hopefully someone has a towel for him wherever he ends up. And they, they, they don't wear underwear. So with Obi-Wan going to a place even further than far, far away, the remaining heroes escape to another rebel base. It appears as if there are a few of these scattered throughout the universe, but it's surprising that Leia decided to sacrifice her own home planet's location instead of this one. Hmm. In the midst of all this, Han and his dog collect their fee and say, See ya, freaks, because why would any sane person want to be caught up in an intergalactic war? Yet the Empire manages to find the Rebels again. Seriously, they seem like the true intellectuals of the franchise here. Instead of engaging in Mortal Kombat, though, they take the fight to the stars, using some fancy and frankly non-aerodynamic spacecraft to do battle. The Rebels decide it's time to destroy the Death Star, which you'd think they would do since the whole movie has been about that from the get-go. Of course, there's a huge cat and mouse sequence between Vader and Luke 
Luke, told you he was important here, and they overshadow everyone and everything else. Like, no one even cares about all the other people who died for the cause. And just as it looks like Vader has the upper hand and is about to turn Luke into Kentucky Fried Rebel, the pirate and dog pop out of nowhere to save him and knock Vader off course. Hooray! Now the scene is set for Luke to use the Force to destroy the Death Star, which he apparently knows how to do all of a sudden because the director George Lucas probably didn't have enough budget for a more intricate training montage. So he channels his best Professor Xavier impersonation and mind controls torpedoes to crash into the space station. Boom! Pop goes the weasel! Eat that, Vader! Ha ha ha! For destroying the Death Star and saving her hide, Leia hands Han and Luke medals. Medals. After all that effort, they get medals. What's even more insulting is that the dog didn't receive one. <laughs> did he or did he not contribute to the mission? Honestly, the Rebels don't deserve Chewie. <laughs> Need some more badly explained movies in your life? Then check out our videos on the first Harry Potter movie. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome.